A month ago, the huge natural saltwater ecosphere turned one year old, which means it is time for a one year update. This closed ecosystem has quite a history, so let's take a look. It all started a year ago when I went to the beach and collected seawater and seaweed and algae and sand in jerry cans. Then I put everything together in a large glass jar. And then I closed it with an airtight lid. It turned out I had accidentally caught a starfish and that was pretty cool, but by the next day it had disappeared. And as anybody who has ever owned an aquarium knows, that's bad news. I also accidentally caught a small crab and he seemed to be doing well, but strangely enough he also disappeared really quickly. I actually caught another crab, a crab in its larval state. This crab was really really small, but it already had the distinct crab features like claws. Also in this ecosphere were a worm, possibly sea slug, but not likely, a different jiggly worm and a type of saltwater gamara shrimp. After a month the tiny crab had turned into a big crab and I was suddenly seeing a lot of copper pods. It also turned out that there was a vibrant and big population of a lot of different species on the glass. It contained crustaceans of various types and sizes, as well as worms and other invertebrates. The Gracilaria vermiculophila, a type of macroalgae, was doing really well and growing. Not very surprisingly, the sea lettuce started to rot, but the algae ball was doing well. After two months, the crab had grown even more and was looking really healthy, and it seemed to become more active. At this point I was really impressed that it was still alive. That might sound harsh, but the crab was an accident. I did not intend for him to be in here. If there was a way to safely transport him back to the ocean, I would have done that. Well here he was and he was doing well. It was also around the two month mark that new sea lettuce and other macroalgae started to grow on the glass of the jar. Something I had never thought would or even could happen. That was really exciting. Nothing much had changed when it comes to the algae in a month, except that the seaweed with air pockets started to decompose. I was also amazed by how well the Gracilaria vermiculophila was doing. This was also the first time I spotted nematodes and the on the glass community had grown and incorporated what looks like paramecium. Copper pods. But here's the biggest change in two months. Out of the depths of the earth of the jar a spionid worm had appeared, a type of polychaete worm with two long tentacles coming out of its head, which it uses to transport food to its mouth and to build a tube out of sand to act as shelter. I can tell you it's really freaky to suddenly see tentacles sticking out of the sand in your jar at home, but also really cool. After four and a half months, the crab was still doing really well. It hadn't changed much in size, but somehow seemed more mature in its behavior. There was more algae growing on the glass. And the number of nematodes had grown, but then disaster strikes. After five months, the crab had died. 
It happened when I was away, so I didn't see how or why it happened. But I know that, looking back at all of this footage, I missed the little guy roaming around on my windowsill. It was up to the ever-growing army of paramecium, plankton, bacteria and all other small life to process and get rid of his dead body. It was uncertain if this closed ecosystem would be able to survive this blow, this inevitable ammonia spike. Only time would tell. So, this is what the ecosphere looked like from the beginning. After a month, after two months, after four months, after five months, and now, after a year. The only thing that has been really consistent is its neighbor, the spring ecosphere. It would have been really nice if I had some footage from a month ago, because the ecosphere looked really green and healthy and nice. Unfortunately, I don't. Because since then, we've been hit by a heat wave and most of the algae has died, which is why it's looking so white. Luckily, the animal life has survived and has been able to recover for the most part. If we look at the little carpet of surviving algae at the bottom, we can still see a wide variety of crustaceans, worms, paramecium and a lot of other small animal life. I know I've said it a few times before now, but I am absolutely mind blown that life is able to survive in one of these closed ecosystems. What you're looking at is a bunch of different species and a lot of individuals living in their own closed ecosystem. They have no interaction with Earth's ecosystem at all. They only receive energy. They have lived in this environment for over a year. They survived the crab dying. That's the equivalent of an animal the size of Europe dying on Earth for us. Just recently they survived a massive heat wave. And they survive most of the producers in the ecosystem dying because of that heat wave. All in all, I guess it's only fair to say, life, uh, finds a way. This is one of the few pieces of macroalgae on the glass that has survived. Of course we shouldn't forget the on the glass community. Here's something new. That green stuff might look like algae, but it's actually a colony of cyanobacteria. While I was investigating this, I suddenly saw a piece of dead algae moving in the background. Weird. Then I saw that there were two tentacles sticking out of the sand, moving grains of sand around. And my mind went racing. I looked at it closer and it was definitely a spionic worm. The big question is, how did it get here? The previous one disappeared 9 months ago. Had it laid eggs? Or maybe it just went dormant for a long period. Whatever the reason, the fact of the matter is that there's a spionic worm in the secosphere again. And I'm quite happy about it. I also noticed that a little piece of the Gracilaria vermiculophila is still alive. Almost all the other macroalgae has died during the heat wave, but this piece is still hanging in there. It's not looking really healthy though, so I hope it will be able to recover. Here you can see the worm from another angle. Yay!
Here you can see some dead white algae with a few animals in it. I thought this was really cool while filming it, but honestly I don't know what to say. Here's another angle on the Sweonid worm. Or is it? No, this is actually another Sweonid worm. That's cool and all, but it makes the question of where they come from even bigger. They both live on top of a hill they have built themselves. I talked about how amazed I was that there's animal life in here earlier, but I'm even mind blowner that there are larger animals like this living in the ecosphere. This is a little spionid hill. This is the spionid hill I just showed you. And this little hill in front of the air bubble is the spionid hill I showed you before that. There are three spionid worms living in a triangle in the center of the ecosphere. Whoa! I believe this is the place where the crab died, but I can't be sure, because the body has disappeared. The dead crab has been processed and the shell seems to have dissolved, which is way sooner than I expected. But the razor clamshell is nowhere to be seen either. Unfortunately, almost all of the new pieces of macroalgae on the glass have died. So, after a year, the natural saltwater ecosystem is still alive and kicking. Great! If you want to see other projects and don't want to miss other updates, and you haven't already well, you're going to have to subscribe. Thanks for watching.